Hello, this is Dr. Leila Galban, and today we're going to talk about lexical ambiguity in shop names. Let's start. First, what is ambiguity? Ambiguity is a universal linguistic phenomena, and um, uh, it is very common in all human languages because human language is basically highly inferential and also arbitrary. There is no link uh, or direct relationship between words and the reference in reality. And this is why a language has a very important capacity, which is to produce ambiguous meanings. And as human communicators, we have the ability also to figure out these meanings and to pick or select the meaning that's suitable to the context at hand, okay? Um, we have m uh, many kinds of ambiguity. We start with the structural ambiguity, and here we have two examples. Time flies like an arrow, and fruit flies like a banana. Here we have uh, uh, the ambiguity lies in uh, flies, because flies here is a verb, but here flies here is a noun, and both fruit and flies make noun phrase. Like here is a verb, and like here is, um, uh, sorry, like here is a, um, a preposition, and like here is a verb. So uh, we have this example uh, to illustrate what's meant by l structural ambiguity. Lexical ambiguity uh, has to do with uh, lexical items, with the lexemes, the words, and we have m many kinds. For example, Polysemy, and uh, here we have words having more than one meaning, such as head, sprang, newspaper, ring, etc. Uh, all these words have more than one meaning. L also, we have homophony, which uh, refer to words which uh, uh, share the same pronunciation but have different meanings. For example, meet uh, and meet, right and right, fair and fair. Uh, here and here and, and so on. So in all these examples, they share the same pronunciation, but of course they have different meanings. The relationship between them here is that uh, of homophony. They have homophonic relationships. A uh, third kind is uh, homographs, and uh, homographs are words which have the same spelling, uh, but different, they have different pronunciations and different meanings. For example, we have uh, a tear, uh, when we cry, uh, we have tears. And also tear, when you cut things into pieces, you have beer and bear, you have live and live, you have minute and minute, and so many, many examples. Lexical ambiguity in shop names, which is a topic of today's lecture, is created by something called puns. And puns employ all these forms. It, uh, they employ blasphemy, homoph homophony, homographs, and, and other forms. Okay, uh, uh, what's a pun? A pun is a word play uh, because uh, most of the time we are playing games with the language uh, and we depend or we draw on the capacity of language to produce ambiguous meanings. And, uh, it, and, and it's uh, very important for us to know how to disambiguate these meanings. Uh, and there's something very um, innate in us. Uh, and is, uh, uh, a pun is a word play and it's a very funny way of attracting attention. Uh, puns are um, not necessarily homophonic, strictly, but uh, we can have words which are not e com uh, completely homophonic in the sense that they are not identical in pronunciation. They may differ in one sound or another. Um, uh, but anyhow, we're going to um, use the word uh, bun to refer, and also homophones in general, to refer to words which are uh, identical in uh, pronunciation and uh, maybe also refer to words which are not um, uh, identical in the sense that they may change in one sound or they may differ in one sound or another. Let's have some examples here. We have uh, peace and peace, okay? And what happens is that when puns make or create this confusion, um, they, uh, you know, they spring some sort of humor and irony and joking and, uh, and all these things because we have some sort of incongruity between what we uh, expect in a particular context and what we see or hear or read in this 
uh, context or instead. Uh, this lack of congruity uh, makes us uh, laugh, makes us make jokes, and makes us, it, it, they, they create uh, some sort of um, uh, grab or hook for our attention. They attract our attention. And this is why puns are very, very uh, indicative and really extremely important uh, for uh, making uh, business names and because they are uh, memorable, they are brandable, and they are marketable. Um, let's go to another thing. Uh, ways to create a, a, a marketable business name. Uh, let me uh, give you a very brief um, idea about the major techniques in this regard. Uh, we're talking about shop names, but shop names, in, this is a generic name. It refers to uh, all kinds of business names, uh, company names, brand names, shop names, and so on. But however, we're going to concentrate on shop names in this particular lecture. But first, let's look, uh, have a look at the main uh, strategies or ways that uh, people generally use in order to create a marketable business name. Um, uh, first names are very important because they can make or, bre or break business. Uh, yeah. Very, very important. It's part of the, uh, your brand or your business character and it creates awareness and uh, it really makes uh, a great deal of, um, uh, of weight to your business and to your uh, brand uh, in general. Uh, here are some examples. First, use acronyms such as NASA. Initials such as uh, initials or initialism such as uh, KFC and BP and HSPC. You know, you can use uh, also get some inspiration from mythology and literature. Cupid, for example, the ancient Roman god of love. Uh, use your own. You can use your own name to pray, to uh, to name your uh, your your you know your, your business. Uh, take a look at a map. You can have a look at the map and pick uh, a, a geographical, the name of a geographical place. And we have here Amazon. You know, f uh, this is a very clear example for that. Uh, also, you can make it descriptive. Make your name descriptive, and you tell or uh, what the company or what the business uh, does. For example, uh, Air, British Airways, this is the flag carrier airline of the UK. The, and we have Nomads, this is another uh, company. Uh, the name itself instantly invokes sorts of travel and adventure. Uh, you have also another company uh, or business named the uh, Virgin, which refers to uh, being completely new to the business. So um, to make your names expressive in the sense that they describe what exactly your company or your business does. Also, people can use Latin because Latin is, uh, you know, it has history and uh, it's somehow elegant. And so people uh, go to Latin in order or Latin in order to get names uh, for their business. Uh, also, you can clip, you can cut uh, words <laughs> and make it shorter. For example, Cisco, is, this is a, a name that's inspired by f uh, its founding location in San Francisco. So uh, the founder of this company clips the uh, name San Francisco, and it's only Cisco and the name his own business. Um, also, you can play games with spelling to grab attention. This is a very important technique. Uh, for example, Flickr uh, and Tumblr, the E in all these words are, uh, in all these words is uh, deleted. And also in a uh, uh, company uh, named Creato, here E is replaced by O. So you are playing games with spelling, and this is a very attractive and uh, um, a really important uh, form of, uh, uh, of business naming. Also, you can pick a word randomly from the dictionary, open the dictionary on any page, pick any word haphazardly or randomly. Also, you can see a name generator. Here we have w so many um, applications and, s and websites which can help people who are looking for a marketable and brandable name to uh, get one and also to Google it in order to see whether it is used or not. And even if you have a, uh, if you like a name and uh, you find that it is there um, and uh, it has already been used, you can get it and change its spelling. You play with its spelling and you get another a name you add an, a sound you delete another you, you, you add a letter or you delete on uh, a, a letter uh, you make some change you, you make a twist 
uh, on the, um, uh, the spelling of the word, and you get a new word. Uh, here we let's have some examples. Okay. Here are some uh, very uh, you know famous uh, companies. Uh, we have um, many ways. For example, we have a snack check, and here's a relationship is uh, that of uh, you know uh, Ryan. They both Ryan. Uh, together, also were uh, a company such as Golden Gold. Here is the owners use alliteration, starting with the same sound. Uh, you know, Golden goes the sound ga in both in both words. Amazon is, 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 is as we uh, said before, it is named after uh, uh, the Amazon River, one of the uh, largest rivers in the world. And uh, it, and, and it, the using this noun or this name. Uh, actually, it was uh, uh, meant to uh, to make Amazon.com the biggest online uh, marketplace to be number one, just like Amazon is just uh, one considered to be uh, number one or number two in uh, uh, as a, a big river or as the largest river in in, in the world. So they, uh, here we find that uh, the all the connotations of the Amazon uh, are meant to be transferred to. Uh, the the company, okay. Uh, if you look at Caterpillar, which is uh, uh, also a very famous uh, company, um, you, you find it's very exotic because it's not uh, it's not ordinary. It's uh, unique, and no one could ever uh, think that it is uh, a construction machinery and equipment company. The name itself doesn't tell that. So sometimes the name is not necessarily expressive of what does a company or a business uh, do. Okay, now let's move to uh, our uh, job today, which is to talk about uh, uh, shop names. And I have given you a number of uh, shop names, and I want to, to, uh, you to share with me um, w the ideas that are raised here regarding uh, how to uh, account for the choice of the name and why uh, does uh, this uh, or, uh, or the owner of the, uh, of the shop have uh, uh, chose or this particular name, etc. cetera. Uh, first, we have um, the first homophone. We have Titanic. Look at this. This is a, 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 a restaurant, a Thai restaurant, uh, presenting Thai cuisine, Thai food. And the owner have a sort of uh, picking the uh, name Titanic to his restaurant uh, because of the similarity. You know, it's not the similarity. You can, both are identical in pronunciation. Titanic is a ship, and Titanic is uh, as a, uh, a restaurant, a Thai restaurant offering Thai food. Uh, this restaurant, as you see here, um, you know, is named after the this famous shop. Uh, this famous ship, and it's a word play. A homophone here, as you see, they share the same pronunciation but different meaning. And probably the uh, shop owner uses this word play to stimulate minds and to arouse people's uh, strong emotions towards Titanic uh, because uh, people are really having uh, very uh, strong uh, emotions and bonds to this uh, incredible story, uh, especially the love story. Uh, every one of us remembers uh, Jack and uh, remembers um, Rose and their uh, their love story and the tragic end of the story. Also, we can. Uh, uh, get some sort of associations with the glamour, the beauty, the, the luxuries, uh, and also love. Uh, all these things uh, are, uh, you know, fire our imagination as recipients or as clients. Um, and um, another thing is that uh, uh, the owner uses this uh, name in order to invoke sorts of travel and adventure as it is cited here on the glass. Um, but we do not know uh, what was uh, on the owner's mind because the interpretations to this choice are very uh, uh, various and they are open and we cannot tell for sure uh, what exactly wa was on his mind at the time uh, when he picked the uh, name Titanic to his business or to his shop. 
Uh, and also some people might, uh, might ask, uh, uh, was it a wise choice to, you, to get uh, or to name uh, a restaurant Titanic and uh, to uh, revive in our memories a tragic end uh, and uh, uh, one of the uh, heart-trenching uh, stories in, in human, in human uh, history? Um, uh, we do not know. We do not know. Uh, and uh, this is one of the, uh, this explains the beauty of, 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 of uh, shop naming and um, uh, because uh, everyone can interpret uh, this on his own way and I ask you to interpret uh, do you do you like the the the, uh, uh, the, uh, the name how do you feel about it uh, uh, was the owner uh, successful in picking the name? Uh, uh, is it uh, suitable to uh, to have your own uh, dinner, for example, in a, uh, in a Thai uh, in a Thai restaurant called Titanic? Uh, would you be happy? Uh, would you be upset? We want to hear from you. Please write in the comment in the comment section below. Let's move to another couple of homophones. And here we have also related uh, a couple of, uh, of uh, shop names, and both uh, uh, refer to Fo. And Fo here is, um, uh, uh, you know, it's a, a Vietnamese beef noodle, uh, and it also can refer to Vietnamese cuisine in in, in general. In the first, you have uh, uh, Fabulous. Uh, there is a plant here, and here you find that the. Uh, the, the name uh, is a result of uh, a, a you know game w uh, playing with 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 the spelling. Uh, this is to grab people's attention. Um, the same applies here to simply for you. It is also playing games with uh, with spelling in order to grab attention. And also, as I told you, uh, word play some sort of a ambiguity. Let's have another couple. Yeah, here we have matadors. Matadors. Uh, 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 this is, um, uh, you know, um, um, a security uh, door shop, and uh, uh, the, the 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 name. It's named after uh, matador and matador in uh, in bullfighting, which is a, a, a major. Uh, sport in uh, in Spain, the matador is the principal bullfighter uh, who is appointed to kill the pull. And here, this homophone is used in order to make us feel that uh, uh, just like the matador uh, uh, is strong and is uh, powerful and is confident. Uh, the also the uh, the metador doors uh, or the metal do or the doors here which are uh, manufactured in this shop uh, carry the same quality so all the characteristics and the properties which are attributed to the metador the bullfighter the principal bullfighter are transferred to the doors and this is a very interesting thing and here also it's a play uh, with uh, language uh, here play with the language play with um, uh, with the spelling, uh, play with the, the sounds of words, and as you see, it's a very catchy um, uh, name, uh, uh, as you see. Let's move on to another example, also similar. Here in Korea, we have a, a, a shop, and this it's a name, Seoul Made. Seoul here is the name of the Korean capital, and it uh, rhymes, or it's, you know, it's identical in pronunciation to the word soul mate. And, uh, you know, uh, wh whether matador or soul mate, uh, uh, they draw on our ability to understand the relationship between uh, each couple of homophone and that language really wants to convey both, to convey uh, that uh, uh, the matador and the, uh, the, the doors here are powerful and to convey that soul uh, or soulmate uh, and uh, which is uh, uh, this uh, shop is really uh, giving us some relaxation and some calm and uh, you you will find some sort of harmony uh, there so all these meanings are transferred to us by uh, the by using these homophones let's go to another couple yeah this is wouldn't it be lovely uh, uh, playing with uh, pronunciation, uh, playing with spelling, as you see, 
uh, a very lovely uh, uh, name. Uh, and also, it, it is very catchy and it, it, it attracts our attention because had the owner used the ordinary spelling, it wouldn't be uh, such, uh, such catchy and such attractive. Okay, here we have also uh, British Airways, this barber shop, and um, using British Airways instead of British Airways. Uh, and um, you find here uh, fun is created because of it's a pun and uh, it plays on uh, sounds and it plays on m uh, on meanings. So this is a very interesting and catchy example of uh, using homophones in order to make puns and to create um, a, a brandable and amazing shop names. Another couple. Uh, or this one, uh, you know, uh, this is uh, fuchsia, you know, back to fuchsia, okay? And as you see, it rhymes, and you know, it's, it's, it's not rhymes, it's, it is identical to Back to the Future, which is a movie, and it's named after this movie. People uh, use movies, they name their uh, shops and their businesses after celebrities and after movies because they want to um, to draw on this fame and to make use of this uh, on this fame in order to generate more success and to build uh, their uh, uh, what what's called brand awareness or business awareness and uh, business image and prospects for for, for success. Another example. Here we have Kung Fu, Kung Fu, okay, uh, also the homophone. Uh, and remember, may, someone would say it's not a complete homophone because we have uh, Kung Fu, food, food, okay. But remember that in, um, in, in the G, when it comes finally, it's held, it's not pronounced. So it, it, the, two wor the two words really uh, are identical in uh, pronunciation, Kung Fu and Kung Fu, okay. Uh, also, it's a, uh, had, had the owner used, uh, for example, a kung fu without food, okay, without death, it wouldn't be so uh, catchy and so attractive. It would be so ordinary, uh, something which cannot attract people's or grab people's attention to the cuisine and, the, and to the business or the shop in general. So it's a very intelligent way of marketing and of attracting people's attention and uh, making the brand really brand uh, marketable and successful. Let's get, uh, uh, yes, another um, homophone. Here we have uh, a barber, uh, uh, you know, purple Streisand, uh, and purple Streisand. This is um, uh, this is a, a purple shop that is named after the American singer, actress, and filmmaker uh, Barbara Streisand. Uh, Streisand, and uh, as you see, they are really uh, <laughs> interesting couple of homophones. And uh, the 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 shop here is uh, uh, capitalizing on uh, the fame of this uh, actress. Uh, in order to generate more, um, you know, uh, more fame and more success, and also to increase purchases and uh, and and so on. Yeah, look at this. Uh, take it easy. Take it. Take. Take it easy. Here, this is a semi-homophone. It's not com a complete or an identical homophone because sometimes words that are close to homophones are placed in context where the reader or the hearer would expect another word. Here, you expect, instead of tech, take. You, 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 do, you do not expect tech. You expect take, right? So when you find tech instead of take, Okay, this is again, it's your expectation, and this makes what we call incongruity, uh, resolu incongruity resolution theory, which explains to us that we have something and we expect something else, or we expect something and we have something else. Due to lack of this uh, congruity, uh, we have the effect of humor and the effect of puns, and we d get attracted to the name, and uh, our minds are stimulated. 
uh, which is the main purpose behind picking such catchy names. So here the purpose is to entertain the recipient and to make memorable names. Okay, take it easy is a phrase of fun, you know. Take it easy is a phrase of fun. It's not only it has a, a matter of word, you know, it's the whole phrase, the whole phrase. And it rhymes with take it easy. And the language draws on both, on both, on both meanings. Take it easy, tack. Take it easy and they take it easy, and both refer to the idea that when you are dealing with such a shop uh, and you are dealing with tech products, it's it's it, it's gonna be a very easy job and it's gonna be a, a, a stress-free uh, uh, job. You don't have to fear from tech products. Things are 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 so easy and uh, uh, so calm down. Don't be afraid at all and take it easy because here you are in take it easy. Take it easy, take it easy because this is take it easy, you know. A word play, very interesting word play. Semi homophone, this is another example, you know. You, you know this guy, this is Brad Pitt, and this is a bread shop, and the name is Bread, Bread, not Bread, Bread Bit. Here's a word play with similar sounds Bread. Okay, and the bread, you know, they are similar in sounds, except in the in the vowel in, in the middle of the word, uh, of the of the two words. So maybe um, here's the, the the bread shop owner avoided using bread. You know, he didn't say bread bit. He said bread bit. Why? Maybe because it's illegal to use other people's names in order to name a company or a shop or a brand. This may be, or I'm not sure, but uh, most probably it's, uh, it's illegal to do that. So uh, the owner of the shop replaced it by uh, bread, bread instead of bread, uh, for two reasons. Number one, to make his name, the name of his shop descriptive, to describe what is his shop about, what does it do, it sells. Uh, bread and number two to draw on or to make use of the celebrity name in uh, to to generate more attention and to influence their purchase. So this is the main purpose of you of naming uh, businesses and shops after famous uh, or after celebrities. To people want to make use of the celebrity name in order to maximize their uh, purchase and to uh, maximize their prospects of this prospects of success. A very interesting bread, bread, bread uh, bit instead of bread, bread bit. Okay, uh, you see, very catchy, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that you are, uh, you know, uh, smiling while you're looking at this, uh, at this uh, image. Okay, let's have another. Yeah, here we have uh, pizza ha, pizza ha. So another word play, ha ah, here is an exclamation used to express surprise uh, or disbelief, and also as an inquiry inviting uh, affirmative reply. Okay, uh, pizza, ha, what means, do you know, do you want pizza? Do you, uh, is it okay to go to uh, eat pizza or to have pizza uh, 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 and so on. Uh, so here is this also a very important and a very interesting word play, uh, playing with uh, spelling uh, and playing with sounds, uh, you know, uh, two kinds of puns which and two kinds of ambiguity which really, uh, really uh, are interesting. Let's go to another uh, example. Here is Elvis, Elvis uh, parsley uh, and the grapes uh, and the grapes land. Is this a gray, green grocery and has uh, juice? Um, uh, this is a green grocery um, uh, shop. And uh, he also here is a word play because uh, here is a, a, a change from Elvis uh, uh, Presley again, Elvis Presley, which is the name of the American singer and uh, actor. And here you find the shop owner makes a twist, you know, a very interesting uh, a spelling, um, you know, a spelling uh, uh, play, word play. 
uh, uh, so uh, we have uh, parsley instead of uh, uh, presley and uh, it's, it, it's a very lovely I like it because it it, is, it, in, it, it indicates and it describes what is a shop uh, about and what does it do it sells uh, groceries so it's very nice to say Elvis parsley instead of Elvis play Elvis Presley and here also you uh, know that uh, is there is some sort of uh, correlation between the two terms and the two names and the shop owner is uh, drawing on the popularity and fame of the legendary Elvis Presley in order to attract people's attention to his shop uh, and this is a very interesting trick. Semi-homophones also we have yes uh, Indiana Jones uh, this is an American media franchise based on adventures uh, of a fictional archaeologist, okay, and here we is a very famous uh, media franchise, and here are two shops named after this media franchise, uh, and Indiana Jones, and look at this, this is Indiana Bones, no, just changing the, uh, the first letter, and here uh, Indiana Jeans, you know, changing the vowel in the middle of the word, and both are replacing sounds by other sounds or letters by other letters in order to uh, make a catchy uh, shop names and also to draw on the fame of the uh, media franchise Indiana Jones and to make people really un uh, relate, relate to the, the shop and uh, remember its, uh, its name and uh, be attracted to it and uh, 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 you know, make some sort of bond to uh, this uh, these shops. So this is also a, a very skillful way of uh, uh, drawing on famous names in Diana Jones to come up with uh, names for shops that, uh, that are marketable, uh, brandable, attractive, uh, and uh, interesting, uh, really interesting. Uh, also we have semi-homophones, homo semi -homophones. Uh, this is a very interesting example. I want to talk about uh, uh, for a little bit. This abra uh, kadabra. This uh, sorry, abra kababra. You know, abra kababra. This is a restaurant, and it offers the kebabs and the other uh, kinds of food. And um, here, using um, um, the name of abra, it, it it draws on. You know, it is a, a homophone on. Uh, uh, a term called abracadabra, not abracadabra, abracadabra. And this is a spell someone can use in order to make his or her wish come true. And you can find it in Harry Potter movies and in Sesame Street to see uh, episodes and so on. Uh, abracadabra, uh, if someone says abracadabra, this is a spell, uh, this means that his wish will, be, uh, will, come, will come true. It's a spell of creation. It's a spell of creation. And here's a name uh, uh, is given uh, or is taken, and uh, uh, some sort of change happens here because kadabra changed into kababra, kabab, you know, in order to, to be uh, uh, suitable to the, uh, to, to the shop and uh, to the, uh, the, the, the kind of service the, uh, the shop is offering, which is uh, s uh, serving uh, kebab and uh, other kinds of food. So kab when, what does this mean? It means that the name uh, says that uh, whatever you dream of, uh, uh, what, what what you know you you will find it in in our restaurant the perfect meal the perfect kebabs you know it's a magic and here if if you look at the uh, logo or the uh, tagline discover magic food you know, so here the restaurant is uh, giving the message as abracadabra is is used as a spell in order to make people's wishes uh, come true also, abracadabra. Also, uh, you will all your wishes regarding food and perfect meals and kebabs and so on. Also, will come true once you come to us in abracadabra, and you will enjoy the magic food and discover it and enjoy it. Okay, we have another example. Yeah, relatable to that. The the Godfather. Okay, this is a fish shop, and uh, the Godfather here ry rhymes with the godfather, godfather and godfather. Godfather, this uh, cod is a uh, uh, sort of fish, 
And the Godfather, Godfather uh, rhymes with uh, Godfather. And the dictionary, if you go to the dictionary, you'll find two meanings for uh, the word Godfather. Number one, a man who presents a child at baptism and promises to take responsibility for their religious education. And number two, a man who is influential or, or pioneering. This is the me these are the two meanings of uh, Godfather. Here, the owner of the shop wants to get all these meanings and all these uh, uh, you know feelings and attitudes and uh, properties and, and, and associations and connotations and all these things to be transferred to his shop and what does this mean he won't say that my cut father shop is really uh, uh, the boss, whenever you want to eat fish, come to us because we are the pioneers, we are the, the boss, we, we are the big boss, just like the godfather. And this makes us think of the great uh, movies, uh, The Godfather, uh, Marlon Brando and Al Pacino, and, Al Pacino and, uh, uh, and, and how these uh, iconic uh, actors really make uh, iconic uh, movies uh, and uh, uh, you know talking about people who are in power and in crime and so on. so all these meanings uh, are transferred to god godfather in uh, you know a link create a link between godfather and godfather and and this this link is left for us to create once we make this connection between godfather and which revives or stimulates in, uh, in, in our minds or recalls, makes us recall the word Godfather and the movies and the, the different meanings of Godfather and, and all these things. And we associate uh, all these meanings to the, uh, uh, the word Godfather. So Godfather, uh, Godfather uh, is uh, referring to supreme quality as the tagline here in red is, uh, is saying. Here we have another uh, example. We have Beauty and, and the Beach. Okay, what does this uh, name uh, say? Or what does it, uh, uh, can you guess or see what's the relationship here between Beauty and the Beach and the Beauty and the Beast? Yeah, Beauty and the Beast, this, you know, movie is, and um, cartoons and, and this, you know. Uh, and here also is a, a word play. Um, uh, changing only one sound at the end, you know, uh, beauty and the beach, a very attractive name. So we are here, people are using uh, semi uh, homophones or homophones, uh, words which are identical in pronunciation uh, or uh, similar in pronunciation in order to attract people's attention because these words really are funny and very, very, um, uh, 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 you know, interesting. Let's take another example. Lord of the Wings. Uh, this is similar to or rhyming with Lord of the Rings. You know, uh, a very famous, uh, you know, movie. And uh, uh, it rhymes with this. And uh, uh, which means that, um, you know, um, if you go, if you come here, uh, you will get the perfect wings, and uh, uh, this indicates also power, just like the Lord of the, of the Rings. There is an association, and the owner of the shop wants to create an association between Lord of the Wings and Lord of the Rings. This link okay, is left for us also to establish and to understand in order to grasp the meaning and to uh, identify the beauty of the name. Another example, yeah. Here we have Bastabilities, an Italian uh, shop. You know, Bastabilities, uh, it, it reminds you of, or it rhymes with Bastabilities. Bastabilities, just adding or insert, inserting uh, a sound here, which is ta, you know. Uh, but here, uh, uh, why? Why? Because it's pasta, pasta, and abilities. Look at this a combination of two words. Um, compound word and uh, uh, it, 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 it very indicative. It, it talks about uh, the properties of pasta and how it it is it, it it's really catchy uh, name. Um, you have also another uh, name, another uh, 
homophone. Uh, this is uh, florist gum, uh, and the florist gum here, uh, and this uh, name uh, is um, picked after uh, a movie here uh, starred by the iconic uh, Tom Hanks uh, called uh, Forrest Gump, and uh, <laughs> it talks about uh, it's about a man with low IQ and who has been involved in so many historical events, and all he wants to not to do is to be reunited with his childhood sweetheart. Uh, and so on. Uh, so here the owner is uh, uh, drawing on this uh, movie and the name uh, Forrest Gump played by Tom Hanks in order to attract people's attention as you see. So in most of the cases the people are drawing on celebrities and drawing on famous movies and famous actors and famous celeb and, and, and celebrities in order to capitalize on uh, this fame and uh, to double the uh, uh, prospects of success. Uh, finally, let's uh, uh, end my lecture with uh, an exercise. Uh, give it a try. Please do the following. Uh, using homophones and uh, uh, balasimi, uh, invent a name for the following. Number one, a restaurant. Number two, a supermarket. Number three, a pharmacy. Number four, a proper shop. Number five, a, a shoe shop. Number six, a grocery store. And number seven, a fitness center. Okay, I hope you try this and you write your answers in the uh, comments below. And uh, thank you.